stimulants. Stimulants are the most used and considered the most effective medications for the treatment of ADHD, both in children and adolescents, as well as for the treatment of adults with ADHD. Psychostimulants, including amphetamines and methylphenidate, are a broad class of sympathomimetic drugs. They increase not only movement, but arousal, vigilance, wakefulness, and attention. Some are considered drugs of abuse, such as cocaine. Others are socially acceptable, such as caffeine. But we're focused on the therapeutic drugs, and again, those are amphetamine, methylphenidate, and modafinil. These, at least, the former two amphetamines and methylphenidates, have received indications by the FDA through a number of randomized clinical trials. Now, we've been using stimulants for a long time, and even a long time in adults, and prescribing patterns have changed. For instance, amphetamine is now prescribed over methylphenidate, something that would be hard to note 30 years ago when methylphenidate had a large lead over amphetamines. Adults now exceed children in the proportion of prescribed stimulants. Adult women are more likely to receive stimulants than adult men. And not surprisingly, there have been a large increase in the number of stimulants prescribed for any group. Long-acting stimulants are seen for use more in children and adolescents than in adults. Now, I've provided you with a number of charts of both FDA-approved stimulants, including some older agents, such as mixed amphetamine salts, mixed amphetamine salts extended release. We've looked at methylphenidate products, such as Oros methylphenidate, sustained release, dexmethylphenidate extended release, and a number of different extended release methylphenidate preparations, including methylphenidate sustained release and methylphenidate extended release. As I implied before, one of the big differences between stimulant preparations is not only the amphetamine methylphenidate dichotomy, but also formulations in terms of the time to onset and the duration of functioning or acting. That is, they're short acting drugs that last three to five hours, or intermediate drugs which last from four to eight hours, and finally, a number of medications that last longer than eight hours. These are certainly preferable for those individuals who need medication throughout the day and may forget multiple administrations. Amphetamine ER tablets demonstrated efficacy in the treatment of ADHD in adults with an anticipated safety profile. They found no certain evidence that IR methylphenidate compared with placebo or lithium can reduce the symptoms of ADHD in adults with low or very low certainty evidence. Adults treated with IR methylphenidate are at increased risk of gastrointestinal metabolic harms compared with placebo. Clinicians should consider whether it is appropriate to prescribe IR methylphenidate. Very low certainty evidence that extended release methylphenidate compared to placebo improved ADHD symptoms, that is, small to moderate effects, measured on rating scales reported by participants, investigators, and peers such as family members. Methylphenidate had no effect on days missed at work or serious adverse events, the effect of quality of life was small, and it increased the risk of several adverse events. We rated the certainty of the evidence as very low for all outcomes due to high-risk bias, short trial durations, and limitations to the generalizability of the results. The benefit and harms of extended release methylphenidate therefore remains uncertain. A case control study found that the long-term exposure to ADHD medications was associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases such as hypertension and arterial disease. Longer cumulative ADHD medication use was associated with increased risk of hypertension, and arterial disease. Across the 14-year follow-up, each one-year increase of ADHD medication was associated with a 4% increased risk of cardiovascular disease, with a larger increased risk in the first three years of cumulative use 
and stable risk over the remaining follow-up. Similar patterns were observed in children and youth, that is, aged less than 25 years, and adults aged greater than 25 years. These findings highlight the importance of careful weighing potential benefits and risks when making treatment decisions about long-term ADHD medication use. Clinicians should regularly and consistently monitor cardiovascular signs and symptoms throughout the course of treatment. However, other side effects are more common, such as irritability, decreased appetite, plus or minus weight loss. The present status of being a Schedule II drug by the DEA indicates a higher risk of misuse or addiction from stimulant medications. The discontinuation rate among adults due to adverse events is about 10%. As I mentioned previously, we are likely to consider longer-acting drugs over shorter-acting stimulant medications. These longer-acting drugs result in better functioning during the course of the day and probably have lower abuse potential. In considering which preparation to prescribe, the clinician or prescriber should consider patient preference and should start low and progressively increase the medication until there is little or no room for improvement. The clinician should also balance side effects versus clinical effectiveness. During the course of treatment, the prescriber should monitor side effects through such things as vital signs, blood pressure, heart rate, or weight and should examine neurovegetative symptoms such as sleep, appetite, or ask about other somatic ills such as headache or GI distress. In terms of cardiovascular evaluation and monitoring, we mentioned before that it is important prior to treatment to evaluate cardiovascular function through eliciting of symptoms, a positive cardiovascular history, blood pressure, and heart rate. During the course of stimulant treatment, one should monitor blood pressure and heart rate initially weekly, monthly, then bimonthly during maintenance treatment. Monitoring treatment can be done through the use of rating scales. Some of the rating scales that I mentioned previously, or some of the subscales, can be administered at intervals to monitor the effectiveness of drug. The lack of effectiveness suggests changing the preparation or specifically changing from amphetamine to methylphenidate or vice versa, prior to augmentation to non-stimulant medications. The key points to this section are that stimulants, including methylphenidate and amphetamine, come in several formulations, short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting. Common side effects include dry mouth, insomnia, irritability, decreased appetite, weight loss, and headaches. Prescribers should screen for cardiovascular risk factors before beginning stimulants and monitor blood pressure and heart rate during treatment.